to talk about the healing of the soul. The healing of the soul. What is God's purpose for your soul? Now, the most important thing in your life is the condition of your soul. You can call it your heart, you can call it your spirit. You know, the, the Bible uses these terms somewhat interchangeably. But the condition of your heart, your soul, is what is important to God and should be the most important thing. For out of the heart flows. Jesus said that rivers of living water will flow out of your heart. If your heart is in fellowship with God, living in righteousness, faith in the word of God, your life will experience the blessing of God. Don't focus on the physical. Focus on your relationship with Jesus Christ. He must indwell the soul. Amen? Amen. Yes, everything hinges on your relationship between your heart and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the soul. Matthew 1.23 The angel says to Mary, the angel says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The greatest need of any of us is not physical. It's to be saved from our sin. Yes. Revelations 1.5 says, To him who loved us, I think one of the most difficult revelations to grasp is that God loves us. People say, oh, I know that. But have you experienced it? To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You see, the Holy Spirit will come and apply the work of the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse and redeem our soul. Do you know, um, uh, you know, in praying for people, um, you know, you, 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 often it's physical, other times it's, but anyway, often it's physical, you broken bones or whatever is, is the problem. And it's, it's relatively simple. But one day I was watching the Lord doing surgery on someone's soul and the Lord said, this is too complex for your natural mind to understand. Too complex. The soul. The soul. Too complex. God is in the business of bringing wholeness to people's soul. You know, God wants to abundantly bless your soul with his presence. So when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said in Mark 1, 7, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. God so loves us that he wants to baptise us, baptise our soul, our heart, our spirit, everything, our body, in his precious Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the baptiser in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hallelujah. You know, I seem to get such, uh, such reactions from people talking about the baptism in fire, you know. I get all this reaction, you know, because people think, somehow they think that it's not necessary. You know, well, why do you need to be baptised in fire? You know, as if, as if they understood what the soul needs. I don't understand. But I tell you what, if God decides to baptize you in fire, you'll burn. You'll burn. 
Amen. Hallelujah. If you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you'll know it. Praise God. I remember uh, I went to a, a conference and uh, somewhere in Sydney, I think, uh, about 20 odd years ago. And I said to one of the counselors, I said, oh, I'm just thirsty for God. And uh, I had no idea really about anything much. And so a few of the prayer helpers, they began praying for me. And I said, well, I think I'm going to fall over. <laughs> I said, I think I'm going to fall over. And down I went. And uh, they continued praying or prophesying or whatever they were doing, but I couldn't hear them because I was underwater. Blub, 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 blub. That's all I could hear, you know? Praise God. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire. Your soul was designed to be saturated with God. And He wants to saturate your soul with His presence his love, his joy, his peace. Praise God. You know, when the prodigal son came home in Luke 15, the father said, let's have a party. Let us be merry. And it says that they began to dance. You know, there's such, there's such wonder in the party of God. And the wine is wonderful. Turn to your neighbour and say, Neighbour, you need to taste the wine. <laughs> Drink deep. Drink deep. Hallelujah. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he'll give you the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. Romans 5, 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We all need the love of God. You know, people who are dry, who need the love, they can be difficult to be around. We all need the love of God and his joy and his peace and his hope. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. You know, it's not church socials. Hallelujah. I mean, there's more to church. I mean, it's good to have meals together, but there's more to church than eating and drinking. Hallelujah. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of heaven, there is righteousness, joy, peace and love. What is going on in the Western church today? Why have they cut out the joy? You can't be drunk in the spirit. Why have they cut out righteousness and stopped preaching repentance? What are they on? The kingdom of heaven is righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Spirit. Come on. Let's uh, take, take human control of the body of Christ and say Jesus Christ is Lord and King. He's the head of the church and let him have his way and do what he wants to do. Amen. Praise God. I was in Queensland and um, I can't remember what was wrong with this lady, but I walked down the aisle and this lady, and just, I just walked past her and she begins to burn. She's on fire. And then the Holy Spirit, the power of God falls on her feet and she's sitting but running on the spot. And the Holy Spirit just falls on her, you know? And she's running away and she's, she's burning and then she falls out and she's on the floor and, and it's all happening. Hallelujah. And then she got up and testified the next day how she had been healed, how she was in chronic pain and so on. Hallelujah. Just let the Holy Spirit have his way. 
You know, God's not trying to be proper in church. He humbles the proud. He, he will do what he wants to do to heal your soul. Praise God. I mean, if, if the healing of your soul means you're screaming and demons coming out and vomiting, praise God. Just get over yourself. Amen. Praise God. So things that can go wrong with the heart. First of all, the heart can become defiled by sin. Jesus said in Mark 7.20, What comes out of a man, that defiles a man. From within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness. What is lewdness? Pornography. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So, you know, in, in the book of Revelations, Jesus says to the church, you say that you're rich, you say that you can see, you say that you're wealthy and that your garments are clean, but he said you are blind and wretched and poor. You know, so unless the Holy Spirit comes into the church, the church looks good on the outside, you whitewashed tombs, but is defiled, can be defiled on the inside because only the Holy Spirit applies the blood. Only the Holy Spirit knows how to heal the heart, to cleanse the heart. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And the dangerous thing about defilement is that it's like the flu. It can go from one person to another. You think about that. Hebrews 12, 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any roots of bitterness spring up, causing trouble, and by this many become defiled. You see, when one person becomes defiled, it can spread to other people. Bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred. And they begin to speak the defilement of their heart and people listening become defiled. And in that defilement can come evil spirits. Because evil spirits are like flies. They're attracted to rot. Hallelujah. Amen. And so... So when you get this, uh, I'm on a roll, is that okay? Yes. When you get rot in the church and they begin preaching things that are okay, that the Bible says is sin, the defilement begins to spread. Defilement needs to be dealt with by repentance. Hallelujah. So... The heart can become defiled. Secondly, the heart can become tormented. A heart that is tormented is a terrible thing. And very often torment is caused by evil spirits. And we read in Luke 6.17 that uh, all the people, a great multitude, were coming to Jesus from Judea, Jerusalem, from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, they came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with evil spirits. Today we have so many people on psychiatric medication. They're tormented and they have to be medicated. And Jesus has the answer to the tormented soul. Amen. Acts 5.16 A multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. All healed. You know, all these psychiatric problems, all healed. Jesus is the answer. 
all the world's problems and dilemmas. Turn to the person beside you and say, Jesus is the answer for you. A heart defiled, a heart tormented, a heart that is broken, the broken hearted. You know, we, in our society, we have so many people who are broken hearted from divorce, marriage breakdown. The Bible says in Psalm 147 verse 3, He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. Matthew 5, 4, Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There is a comfort that God gives those who are suffering. You know, there's a suffering of the body, but there's also can be the suffering of the soul. And the blood of Jesus applies and avails for body, soul, and spirit and mind, the whole lot. It covers it. Amen? Some people think, well, you know, God can heal a cold or something, or, but when you've got a psychiatric problem, you know, or a heart problem, or, you know, they're depressed, or well, there's nothing you can do. You just, church tells people to go and have therapy. Well, there's, Jesus exists. He hasn't changed. Amen? Amen? It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. See, Jesus knows our sorrows. He's acquainted with you. He knows you. Whatever might be troubling you, Exodus 3 verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Let me tell you something. Jesus knows you. When you're crying in your room by yourself, he hears you. He sees you. I was talking to a woman in Queensland in a meeting and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit took me into her house. I could see her and began to describe her house or whatever. And, uh, and I said, I can hear your name being called. And she said, yes, I'm sitting there in my chair and I can audibly hear someone calling my name. And I said, and she said, I went to my sister and I said, what is going on? What is this? She'd been married, an Aboriginal lady, for about 40 years, and her husband left her, and she was just broken-hearted. And Jesus came to her house calling her name. Isn't he wonderful? He knows your sorrow. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. For I know their sorrows, so I have come down to deliver them. Hallelujah. See, Jesus on the cross, he carried it all. He carried your broken heart. You know, some of you here are worried about your children, your grandchildren. You know, you're concerned about what's going on. He carried all of that on the cross. Isaiah 53 verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Amen. You know, everything that you might be concerned about that's troubling your soul, just hand it over to Jesus. He carried it, he took it on the cross. You know, if, you're, if there's someone here, there probably is more than one, you're just suffering depression, terrible depression. You get up in the morning and, you know, and you've got this depression. Ask, Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. And sometimes... You need to be like the widow with the unjust judge, the parable Jesus told. And the widow kept going back and asking for justice. Your justice was granted at the cross. God gave you justice against depression, psychiatric problems, demonic voices, all this type of stuff. 
There's justice through the righteous blood of Jesus Christ. Just keep going back and asking and believing and giving him thanks for what you do not feel, but you take it by faith. Amen. Amen. You know, the devil says, oh, it didn't work. You asked and it didn't work. Faith and perseverance go hand in hand. And the thing about depression, it's like a, a black cloud. It's often demonically caused and it comes with deceptive thoughts. These thoughts say you'll always be like this. There's nothing that you can do. These are lies of the enemy. Or if you've got pain in your body, cancer or whatever, the devil might come along and say, you're going to die. This is the end and this sort of rubbish. But we take the word of God and we declare it and we declare it and we declare it and we declare it and we give thanks and we give thanks and we give thanks. Maybe years go by or months or weeks or whatever, we continue to give thanks, give thanks, give thanks until heaven comes down and glory shines. And we are free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God's remedy, one of the great remedies that God has for sorrow is joy. Man will give you a pill, but God will give you joy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Isaiah 35 verse 10. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion. These are people who went into exile. They shall return with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, they, they were destroyed by the Babylonians. They were taken off into exile. They suffered terribly, but they shall return. Turn to the person beside you and say, you shall return with gladness and joy. Jeremiah 31, 13. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance and the young men and the old together, for I will turn their mourning to joy will comfort them and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't put up with the devil's work. God wants to satisfy you with joy and peace everlasting. Amen. The soul can be affected by stress, and stress primarily comes because, primarily comes because we're not trusting God. The Bible says, "Cast all your anxieties on Him, for He cares about you." It's something I have to preach to myself, you know. Cast it upon the Lord. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Turn to the person beside you and say, Stop worrying, come to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That's the parable on the young men I was talking about. Parable on the young men. Jesus is here, isn't he? Amen. Just look to you, sir. What's happening, sir? My brain's on fire. Sorry? My brain's on fire. What's on fire? My brain's on fire. Your brain's on fire. Come, stand up. Why did you come? I came because I have been diagnosed at Austin level three and I, and I couldn't understand. Level zero. Level, level zero. <laughs> Stand up. <coughs> Stand up. <laughs> the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
I, I have a, I came because I have, I have a, I coming out of you, it's coming out of you, it's my brain, it's coming out of you, yeah, the mighty man of Jesus Christ, everyone pray, you can reach out your hands to the screen, where are you going to live, I came also because I, just be quiet, just be quiet, So unfortunately the audio on this footage was corrupted, so I'm just going to summarize John Robin's testimony. You just saw his ministry and uh, John actually had level 3 autism and was located by the Holy Spirit in the meeting. The next day, he shared that during prayer, he felt his brain was on fire. He was unable to stand and continued to feel that fire all through the night, even after he returned home. He shares how the great surgeon Jesus Christ was working on his brain and he felt the neurons actually coming together and new pathways in his brain opening up. Praise God. John said that the biggest difficulty he had with autism was his understanding. However, the Lord, after the Lord worked on his brain, he is noticing his understanding beginning to increase. And when talking with his mother, Ruby, she shared how this morning John seemed much sharper and started doing his chores on his own when he would usually have to be reminded. Ruby shared that she has believed in faith all his life, that Jesus would heal him. And we see here that the Lord is honoring her steadfast faith. And we rejoice with them and we're excited to see this healing continue in John. Hallelujah. Right. What do you need from the Lord, Mariela? Forgiveness, my friend. Hmm? Forgiveness from my friend. From Mariela. Mm -hmm. How long is this thing going on for? Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift your grip. It's coming out. Everyone pray, everyone pray, everyone pray.
God is a God of mercy and love. Because you repented of that, didn't you? Yeah. So I believe you're having another trouble. Okay? I'm hearing the name John. Okay? And he's sleeping at your breakthrough. I've got three sons. You need a Jesus breakthrough, is that what you mean? All my three sons, yeah. Drugs and alcohol, and they come out of prison and they feel hopeless. Just stuck in your ass, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, upon Jesus, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to heal the brokenhearted, to open wide prison doors, set the captives free. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's reach out our hands. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing on these children, on her children, Lord, and that you set them free. You set the captive free in Jesus' name. Drugs, alcohol, addiction, and the spirit of addiction. You open wide prison doors. Lord, let them all preach the gospel. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. That's the power of God resting on you, sister. Close your eyes now. That's the power of God resting on you. Thank you, Lord. What happened to your husband? Prophetic question. Who is this? What happened to your husband? Porsche. Porsche. What do you need to look for, yeah. Porsche? Um, a lot. Um, What's too lot. much for God? No, it's nothing <laughs> too much for God. Um, everything is wrong in my life. Um, work, um, home life, um, barrenness. Um, Pray. Come on, 
So praise God. Praise God. That's the Lord healing the womb. Everyone pray. That's the Lord healing the womb. That's the power of God. Oh, that's nice. That's the power of God restoring your womb, sister, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. That's, oh, that's the power of God on your womb. Should be feeling that. What do you feel? I just feel warmth all over my face. It's just, just really warm. And I'm starting to feel Sorry. warmth around here. Sorry. I'm starting to feel warmth around here as well. There's a heavenly being standing at your head, which is why your head's feeling warm. What's happening to you, sister? Oh, I'm wonderful. Hey. Yeah, I, I just had to throw something out. I just, I had to throw something out. Something came out. Something came out of you? Yeah, and I'm just... Like, like you vomited or something? Yeah, really? yeah, just... Yeah. And how are you now? I'm just happy. I'm just peaceful, I can go to sleep. I struggle with insomnia so much. Okay, just come over here. God's not finished with you yet. Just stop it, Lewis. Just stop it over here, out of the way of the people. Okay? You don't have to sleep. Someone say praise God. That claps long. Well, he has got autism. And uh, of course, shot of bread problems in the lung. Which one is it? The mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let's pray for it. What's his name? Samuel. Samuel. Let's pray for Samuel. That's the power of God coming on the lung. That's the power of God coming on the lung. The power of God coming on the lung. <coughs> Breathe in. Your lungs opening up. Again. <coughs> Breathe in. There it goes. Just relax, guys. There we go. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Deep breath. How are you going? How are you going? Feels better. Feels better? Yeah. Breathe in. Out. How's that? Feels better. Any shortness? No. You had a collapsed lung, right? Yeah. How's it now? Feels much better now. Yeah, praise God. How are God going through you? How are God going through you? The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Um, I've had uh, shoulder surgery, but I've got a tear in this one too as well, and also my knees as well. So I just wanted to get healing from Jesus. What's your name? Uh, Natalie. You ready? Yep. Jesus to heal you? Yes. It's, it's like a, a grinding in your knees. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You seem to be la lacking cartilage between yeah. the bones and the knees. Okay, it's gr grinding. That's the power of coming on the knees. It's the power of coming on your knees. Uh, just, uh, just almost like a stretching and a warmth. That's the cartilage going in. That's the cartilage going into your knees. That's the cartilage going into your knees. What else is shoulder? That's the left shoulder being healed. Left shoulder, well that's nice. Left shoulder being healed. Okay, lift it up. How's that? That's good, yeah. 
It's the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, power of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Loose your grip. <coughs> Loose your grip. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Did you look at porn before? Yes? Sorry? Yes. That's where you got it from. It's coming out. You're free. How's that? Hey? Something left. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still alive. Still burning, though. Oh, that's the power of God burning all over you. Well, what's your name, sir? Ah, uh, Royce. <laughs> What do you think, sis? What happened to your dad? Your dad's left you. Come on, let's pray for 
here and be broken hard. Come on, God loves you. That's the Lord Jesus Christ healing your broken heart, okay? That's the Lord Jesus. Oh, you're healed. So Steph actually came to receive prayer for a rare heart condition. And as you saw, she had prayer the first time, but of course the Lord wasn't done with her yet, as he later began to reveal her broken heart from her father leaving her. Steph returns the next day to share that she didn't even know that she had been carrying a broken heart. Her father had abandoned her as a young child, and the Lord, out of his great love, healed her broken heart. Steph shares how she had a revelation of God the Father's love for her, and this is all she needs to satisfy her. Praise God. What we didn't see was that not only did God restore Steph's heart, but also healed her physical heart condition. Steph had a rare heart condition since birth called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. She was too ill to attend school, make friends, or leave the house at times. She suffered from frequent fainting, seizures, near-death incidences. She had trouble eating, keeping on weight, and was always in pain. Her mother says that she couldn't work as she had to be her full-time carer. A very debilitating and limiting heart condition. She testifies the next day that her heart has stopped racing, she no longer has dizzy spells, and she feels completely healed of her heart condition. All glory to God. Crystal, let's believe for healing in that. Okay? Thank you, Lord. There's power about coming on you. There's power of Jesus Christ coming on you. Mighty power of Jesus Christ. Flowing on you now. I believe, Crystal, isn't it? I believe you're being baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit coming down on you. What do you feel happening? sometimes seem distant to you? Yes, so... Because mm. I'm seeing Jesus standing, but he seems distant. Okay? 
I think you need to come to him. How does that sound? Amazing. Jesus, the Bible said, if you come to me, I will come to you. If you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. You want to come to him? Yes. Let's all pray with Annie. Annie, let's say this prayer. Father God, I come to you. I come to you. Just as I am. Just as I am. I come to Jesus. I come to Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come to me. Come to me. Just as you are. Just as you are. Forgive me. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. That's the presence of Jesus Christ coming on you. You feel that now? Yes. What does it feel like? It feels overwhelming and I kind of feel like I want to fall over. You want to what? <laughs> fall over. You want to fall over, do you? <laughs> That's Jesus with you. Annie, Jesus is standing on your left. And he says, I will never leave you. There you go. Praise God. My daughter has a drug addiction and mental health issues. And I have a back, um, a bulging disc, which has given me grief for 14 months. And I can't get any pain. With That's the power of God coming on your bulging disc. Okay. That's the power. You believe Jesus will do this? That's the power of God on it. That's the power of Jesus. Release your power. Release your power. Oh, that's nice. Okay, move. Okay, I think you're okay now. All right, move. Just move. How's it, how are you going? Feels so much better. Hey. <laughs> no how pain. are you? No pain. Bend over, whatever. Oh, I can touch the floor for the first yeah. time. <laughs> how long have you been in pain for? For 14 months. <laughs> how was it affecting you? I couldn't, didn't want to do surgery. You had divine surgery today. I did. I did. I teach um, kindy and every day I'm in pain. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Well, that's the glory of God. What's happening? <laughs> I have no idea. Hey. It came on my hand. It was shaking. I just... <laughs> that's the power I got on you. Hold her up, 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 hold her up. Look at me, sis. Look at me. That's the power of Jesus Christ going into you. You've never experienced this before. That's the power of Jesus Christ going through you like electricity. How's that? But I have strong. Okay, mm. Chrissy. All right, let it go. We honor the work of the Holy Spirit. We honor the work of the Holy Spirit. That's God's power going through you like it's like strong voltage, electricity going through you. Tarry in Jerusalem. And you shall be endued with power from on high. You shall be endued with power. You shall be endued with power. The power that comes from heaven has come upon you, sister. There's no power like it. 
What do you feel happening? I feel like electrical shock on my hands. You feel like what? Electrical shocks on my hands. Electric shocks in your hands. <laughs> That's the power of God going through you. Praise God, sister. I don't know what you come for, but you got what God wanted to give you. I'm sure of that. More anointing to help God's people and blessing other people. Yeah, more character as well. Mm. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. Be careful of religion. God wants a loving relationship with you. It's not what you do, but it's being a son with a father. Okay? Be careful of religion. It's not what you do, but it's relationship. Father who celebrates over his son. He wants to celebrate his love over you. Careful of religion. Just need healing for my daughter. She's got allergies mm. and I've got anxiety. Have you? Yeah. Say bye bye to your anxieties. Bye. <laughs> it's coming out of you. It's coming out of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What do you feel happening, sis? <laughs> hey, what's happening? <laughs> Shaky. <laughs> What's happening to you? Hey. Shaking. That's the power. Oh, the Lord's delivering you of that anxiety. I buy anxiety. Terrible thing. Anxiety. You don't want that, do you? <laughs> Back, kidneys. Yeah, kidneys and back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she also wants to pray for a relative in China. Yeah, so she's, uh, yeah, so for herself and her, her relative. Yeah. I believe she'll be fine. Okay? Sorry? I believe she'll be fine. <laughs> That's the power of God against the, the darkness in the kidneys. That's the power of God against the darkness in the kidneys. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That's the spirit of sickness coming out of you. It's coming out of your mouth. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of sickness coming out of your mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of sickness, come out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It's being driven out by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's coming out of your feet and through your body. It's coming out. It's coming out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. You're free. That's the Lord healing your back. Your back's hit fine. What does she feel happening? She feel relaxed. She's been released. 
，好像没有，没有焦虑。No anxiety. No anxiety. 好像也出很大的气出来舒服。She grew out. She feels better. Yeah. Okay, you can hop up now. She can get up now. Come on, Louis. Oh, leave her there. She's under the power of God. Leave her there. Leave her there. What's wrong? Um, I had an accident and I got my pain ran my back. And move your neck. Move. How's that? Good. Hmm? It's good. It's good now or not? Yeah. It's good now. Yeah. Move your, excuse me, sir. Move your arm up. How's that? Good. Good. Another one. Good. How's that? It's feeling good now. What do you got this on here for? I'm not gonna broke it because I flew out from the car and I broke it. You broke your wrist? Yeah, I came from a ward and... You believe that Jesus heals it? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Hmm? Now? Yeah, this one here. Hmm. I want Jesus to heal this. That's the power of Jesus Christ going into your wrist? Yeah. You feel that now? Yeah. Lord, thank you. Okay, how's your wrist now? Feeling good. You want to take that off? How is it? It's good. It was fractured, huh? Yeah. Someone's waiting for my x-ray here. You got your x-ray? Yeah. Give your wrist. How's that? Good. Someone say praise God. Praise what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with it? I'll throw it away. Hey? I'll throw it away. You're going to throw it away? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise Man God. Lord. Why don't you just leave it there? You don't need it anymore. What, what do you want, darling? Oh, he's got anxiety. Hmm? You want prayer, do you? He's anxious. Just let him go and I'll talk to him. You want, what do you want prayer about? Because I've been feeling really stressed out. That's no good, is it? Mm. A lot of issues in the family, huh? <coughs> Stressing you out, huh? That's the love and peace of Jesus Christ coming on you, young man. Okay? Does that feel good? Yes. That's the peace of Jesus coming into your heart. Okay? You feel that? Yes. You're free. Okay?